The reason why most creative collaborations crash and burn is because of a complete misunderstanding about what it means to add value. Even with the best intentions and expert skills, even seasoned creative professionals somehow still manage to disappoint clients and dilute their work. Well, what if I told you that pretty much all clients expect the same five things from their creative teams? And if you can manage to master these things and consistently bring them to the table, you'll never lose a project, you'll build a thriving career, and ultimately you'll do the kind of work that most of us just dream of. Just a quick note, these five things are equally relevant, whether you're working as a creative professional that's serving clients or just delivering creative value in your business, in your organization, or for your team. So if you're ready to learn how to master the creative process and do amazing work well, let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Maynard and I help creative professionals just like yourself to build a meaningful career and do the work that really matters. And on this channel, we talk a lot about connection, about communication, collaboration, and just how as someone with exceptional creative skill, you can consistently build the kind of value that creates personal wealth and also makes a real difference in the world. If you want to join us on this journey, it's as simple as just subscribing to the channel and making sure you never miss a thing. Before we dive into what other people expect from us as creatives, it's probably best to first investigate why there is oftentimes such a big gap in the first place. Oh, and before I go on, I know many of you work as in-house creatives at companies and organizations, while others work on client projects at agencies or as freelance agents. So if you're not daily delivering work to clients, just think of whoever is the main beneficiary of your work. And then every time I mention the word client, just substitute it with your director or your manager or your board or whoever it is that you're delivering work to. So you know the feeling, you've done everything right, the research, the specifications, the analysis, everything is on time, everything is within budget, but somehow the client still isn't 100% satisfied. And no matter who you're delivering work to, it's always possible to sense if they're happy with that, with what you've done or not. Even or sometimes, especially actually, when they don't outright tell you, they just give you this weird vibe that somehow says, thanks but no thanks, in a not so subtle, passive aggressive manner. It's not fun for anybody and believe me, I'm speaking from personal experience, unfortunately. <laughs> you see, the gap comes in when we as creatives see ourselves first and foremost as artists instead of the problem solvers we're supposed to be. So what does this look like? Well, firstly, you completely overthink the granular details of what you're trying to make. And secondly, you massively overestimate the value your, um, how can I put this, your technical expertise is going to add to someone else's life or business. When you tend to prioritize the how of what you're making over the why, then it becomes super easy to very quickly lose sight of what problem you're trying to solve and completely miss the mark on what the client or your director or manager expects of you. So if we can't line our artistic laurels, then what do we have to do to consistently deliver masterpieces that delight people? Well, here are five tried and tested practices that when executed sincerely and honestly will completely transform your work and instantly position you as a trusted advisor, not only as a creative, but as a partner for whoever wants to do meaningful work out there in the world. Firstly, as creatives, we need to learn how to listen. I love this quote by David Augsburger. He writes, being heard is so close to being loved that for the average person, they are almost indistinguishable. When people feel seen and heard, they feel understood. And when a client feels like you genuinely understand them and their problem, they trust you to solve that problem in whatever way you think is best. When clients reject work, it's not because the work is bad. It's mostly because it's the wrong work to begin with. And if you only learn one new creative skill this year, just become a master listener. Secondly, clients have an inherent need for you to not just make what they tell you, but to actually advise them on what even needs to be made. Being able to understand a problem and then imagine a practical way forward is one of the most powerful tools in your creative arsenal. Learn from experienced strategists and practice on smaller projects until you sense that clients trust you to advise them on which creative routes will be best for their needs. Strategic thinking is a hot topic in the business world. And when you can combine this with your creative skills, then you become almost most irresistible as a long-term partner for any business. Nothing brings a project to a screeching halt like unresponsive or just ambiguous communication. This is probably what frustrates the business world most about the creative community. That's us, guys. While you're convinced you're doing the work by yourself in front of your screen, somewhere out there, there's someone waiting for you to just pull them into the process and make them part of your plan, all the time wondering when you're going to make contact again. 
Unresponsive creatives communicating in unclear terms slows down the process, it breaks the momentum, it just drains energy and probably most damaging, it compromises relational trust. Communicate first, communicate often and communicate clearly. And if you do those three things, don't worry, you're on the right path. Clients have an innate expectation that all creators will be super open to feedback, will share their unexpressed creative vision, and in general, just be fun to work with. Well, in what I would guess is about 99% of the projects, that is not fully the case. And as soon as people come face to face with just the messy and gritty reality of the creative process, they get a fright and they shrink back. As the creative in the room, it is your job to be so fantastically good at collaboration that you can guide the rest of the team to better understand, engage with, and control contribute to the final project while keeping all egos in check and relationships in good standing. And even if it is not stated, somehow the outside world expects the creative partner, that is you, to be able to take extreme self-leadership and not only manage your own progress, but also monitor the momentum of the project and that of whoever else might be working on it. Effectively, that means the one of the core capabilities of any working creative is to have a key propensity for action. This means that you can do what needs to be done now. The creative that takes you to the top at the end of the day is never the one with the most skill or the most talent. It's a person who can out-execute the rest and do it consistently over time. And that is the work. And maybe you're still a junior creative and wondering what the world out there looks like and feels like. Well, this is it, what I told you just now. A friend of mine is fond of saying that wedding photography is 1% taking amazing photos and 99% moving furniture around. Well, for us, the creative process is 1% design and 99% dedicating yourself to understanding other people. It's 1% high-res renders and 99% relationship building. It's 1% lines and colors and 99% leading conversations that catalyze workable solutions for business problems. If you're still watching and if you resonate with any of this, then you need to join our community of work creatives who are not just building deeply meaningful careers, but also daily doing the kind of work that makes a real difference in the world. We do this by being honest about what it takes to become a master creative, by investing time and energy back into the creative community like this, and by just genuinely loving a life of learning. And so if this is you too, then I want to hear from you. Connect with me, subscribe to the channel, join the weekly newsletter, or just do both and just become part of what we're trying to build. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. And before you go, remember, you've got this.